I know in the world 100% about two, maybe three undiscovered fish species. So, yeah, and if they are fishing, most of them, they are fishing with hand granate, <laughs> dynamite. <laughs> you know, I would say the net is the most board fishing technique over there. Where are the bad people, you know? I had many times coffee with Taliban guys. We would like to thank everybody who supports this podcast. Yeah, welcome to Shit Happens. Again, again, <laughs> second again. part. Yeah, the second part. Um, yeah, so in the last episode, we was talking in general about your recent life and your, yeah, in general about you, I think. And we came then to a bit of Congo, Amazon, and, um, it was really interesting for me because I never visited some places like this before. And today, Germany is pretty wild. As yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. Like, <laughs> uh, no, today I want to focused on one thing you tell me in the last episode because you tell me that for you it's crazy or, or not for only for you for everybody it's crazy that we have here in our aquariums like small catfish which are cleaning the glasses for example and which also exist of course in the nature but to be honest i never think about it i ever think okay of course they live in an aquarium and never think okay where could they live in the wildlife so i was thinking about it and The question I have is, is there more species out there, maybe, I don't know, a carp, catfish, tench, a pike, whatever. Okay, pike, maybe a muskie, I, I don't know. Um, but other species that we know were exist on other place much, much more bigger, we don't know about it. Can you just talk about it? Like, what is about it? For sure, you have many species like this as well. And I truly believe that we have as well some undiscovered species, which are monster. Again, in the Congo, for sure. I know in the world, 100%, about two, maybe three undiscovered fish species. No scientific name, which can grow 100 kilo plus. For sure. Why? Why I think they do exist. Think or no? I know. Because I've seen them. I've seen them. I didn't catch them so big, but I've seen them so big. But I need more time to prove it. But I, I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, okay, so I, I, I don't want to, you know, bring you in a, in a wrong situation. Now, but <laughs> if I think about a fish I don't know, which grow over 100 kilo, I think about a catfish, arapaima, something like long eeling, like an eel, you know, like <laughs> something like this and big and huge. Is it similar to it or is it something completely different? Completely different. Look, you have minimum 24 truly freshwater species which can grow over 100 kilos and over two meters. Okay. Yeah. Truly freshwater. Yeah. I don't count, for example, beluga sturgeon yet. Yeah. Because it's not kind of truly freshwater, yo. Or Himantura Shalpra, we still the, the giant stingray in, in Asia. Yeah. We are still not sure if is it like freshwater fish, you know, because there are a lot of thoughts that they are traveling uh, a lot in the ocean as well. So I'm talking really freshwater fish species. Plus these undiscovered, for sure. I can't say, and I don't want to say which ones, But uh, if I will have time, I will I will prove it. Crazy. We we will hear from it, I think. If this is going to happen, then we will make an episode about the unknown fish species or something. Um, but back to the question, which species grow so big, which we know? Do you have uh, examples? Yeah. For example, look, the barbel. Yeah. yeah. We, we have barbel in, in, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, once they are like... Let's say over five kilos, they're really big. Yeah. You have, of course, some bigger ones, some giant fish, like seven, eight kilos. But can you imagine a barbel, which can easily grow 100 kilos, <laughs> which can grow 150 kilos, which can grow 200 kilos, maybe which can grow over 200 kilos. Which looks like a barbel. Which looks exactly like a barbel. Is it a barbel? 
it is a barbel. <laughs> Dude. You know, like if, yeah. if it's King Barbus. If I think about barbel, okay, yeah. I, you know, these guys who are sitting on the river with the long rod and staying there and catching these, like normal, they catch you like 30, 40 centimeters. Yeah. C- centimeters. But super strong for that. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine a barbel with two meters with same power. Breaking rods, breaking reels, breaking lines, breaking back of fish, <laughs> destroying everything. It sounds like that you already have done this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been, I've been destroyed several times. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. Um, okay, like so. Now we're talking about the two hundred kilo barbell. Yes. Okay, great. Um, where do they live? Uh, it's uh, Lucio Barbus Asocinus, called as well Mangar. Okay. King Barbus as well. It's a super rare fish, super difficult to catch, uh, quite unknown. Actually, I remember I wrote a very first article, uh, I think, back then in Europe about these fish. It was um, as well in Germany, uh, published in, I think it was Fischungfang. Fischungfang, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's a giant barbel, which you can find in Turkey, Syria. Iraq and Iran, so you can choose which. These are really nice travel <laughs> countries. Like. Which, which uh, country you want to spend your holidays? <laughs> okay, crazy. Like to be honest, uh, to be I would choose Turkey. I think. Yeah, first. that's the worst place to catch them. Uh, uh, really? The, yeah, it's really bad there. Why? Uh, because the population is there extremely small, and uh, you don't find the really big ones there. There are really big ones, but it's um, the, the the number is super small. Okay, okay. But so it's safest place, yeah, that, that's for yeah. sure, but always the safest place is the worst. Yeah, it's like with the fishing lodge. It's yes, exactly, exactly. Big, because okay. then you have a lot of people traveling there for whatever reason. The, the best fishing places are always war zones, uh, places which are very far or places which are very dangerous for whatever reason. War zone sounds like a really interesting thing yeah, to be honest. Because no, no, one, no one wants to go fishing there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> um, okay. Okay, crazy. So uh, I, I, I just have a picture in mind about a 200 kilo barbell. And it's quite difficult to build a picture. I can show you some pictures and some videos which I haven't published yet. And y- your jaw will go down, believe me. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I think so too. Okay, so... Let's let's start in the beginning. You hear about this monster barbel and you want to catch them or what? Exactly. what yeah, I, I knew about this fish for a long, long time from the books as well. Okay. And from Euphrat and Tigris, you know, yeah, describing yeah. huge river with uh, massive fish, which looks like a barbel. So it got on my mind when I was already like 15. And since then, uh, I was thinking about all these fish, but... You know, you have 365 days uh, in a year and uh, you can't divide yourself, you know. So you always need to do your priorities. Do you want to go there or do you want to go there or do you want to go there? And in the end, you do five, six big trips in a year and the year is over. Plus, as well, these days, you know, the time is flying completely different, much faster. Because before in nature, in these places, in 50 years, nothing has changed. But now in one year you can lose the entire population of one spot because it can be destroyed. Mm. So now with my travels, I'm like, for example, I'm getting a lot of invitations into super luxury, expensive lodges around the world. But do I go there? No, I don't go because I can go these places, uh, you know, when I will be old. Now I go super shit trip where I... uh, eat shit, drink shit, sleep shit, but I can have incredible fishing. Uh, it might be dangerous, of course, but now it's the time when I need to visit and do these places because they are disappearing from, from our maps. Yeah. You know? So I understand. Okay. I, I, yeah. I, 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 like, I understand your point of view. I don't understand it in my way because I, you know, you, you do it how you do it. Yeah. You love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, okay, so we have a barbel over 200 kilo who lives in these countries he was talking yeah. about. If I think, now we don't talk about maybe Turkey, okay? But Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, these are definitely countries with war, for example, or definitely bad group of people which are 
definitely not interesting in your health, maybe. So they may be, they have not the same interest than you, like fishing, for example. So, yeah, and if they are fishing, most of them, they are fishing with hand granate, <laughs> dynamite, <laughs> you know, I would say the net is the most board fishing technique over there. Okay, yeah. But don't be, uh, you know, they're as well amazing people, you know, because I mean, if you, if you, if you read the news in Europe, it's uh, kind of big propaganda, you know, because if you think, oh, people go to uh, Iraq or Iran and uh, Iran and Iraq are as well too. It yeah, sounds yeah. similar, but completely different. different, you know? And then if you go there, you, you, you are asking yourself, where are the bad people? Where are the bad people? You know, I had many times coffee with Taliban guys, <laughs> guys from Al Qaeda. I, you know, and they told me, I, I just never interrupt their business. Never, you know, I never told them you're, you're, you are bad people. So it's pers different perspective of you, yeah. you know, it's, I, I'm not the judge over there, you know, and they have their troubles. They have their families. They have to fight for their country as well. I'm not, I'm not judging you are doing something bad or something, something good. Of course, some people might call them terrorists, but who is terrorists, you know? Are the American terrorists? Are the, now the Russian terrorists? Are the Ukrainian terrorists? Are the, uh, who who are the terrorists in these days? You know, there there have been so many wars in so many places that uh, I'm a little bit lost, honest. So I I'm not never listening to medias. I go to these places and made my own judgment yeah. on people. Because if I would be listening to medias in Europe, I can't go anywhere. No, now everyone is saying the Russians are the worst people in the world. I spent in Russia so much time and they, most of the people are super beautiful and super nice and they are poor and they would give you everything. I'm not playing the game that every Russian is terrorist and wants to kill you, you know. It's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's more like, like you say, it's like the image that get drawn here over in Europe yeah. about these countries. Because they need to draw this picture. This is this is the next thing, but I also like, for example, in Afghanistan, it's like there are so many small groups and stuff together and against. So you you don't really know who is who of and course. who is gonna who and what's gonna on. So De it's, definitely, it's, I think it's even difficult for the people there to understand what's going on. So why we should understand what's going on over there? It makes no sense, you know. Yeah. So sometimes you don't need to understand. Sometimes you just need to respect. And for them, it's enough. That's a good sentence. That's oh, because uh, if you go there, like I'm the best uh, European, and all guys, you're shit, and you are a terrorist. Of course, they they won't like you. No, it's the same with Congo. You like uh, say last time, like yeah. But this is like this but these like guys are super smart. The, the Taliban. No, these guys in 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 countries like Iraq, Syria, you know, these guys are super smart. They have a huge knowledge as well, you know. You don't, th you don't, you, you can't judge that they are like, uh, that they are uh, riding on horses or donkeys or whatever, that they are like less than, you know, you would be surprised how much, how much knowledge they have as well about the world. Uh, some of them speaks fluent English and other languages and, and, uh, for example, Iran, Iranian people, I love Iranian people, you know, they, they are. Uh, way closer to European people than than we think, and they have super huge knowledge about about the world. And uh, you you can't ca uh, judge the cover of the book, yeah. you know. Only makes sense. All right. So that, that's uh, around the world, uh, everywhere same. I always behave like uh, I'm going to for a visit. And when you go for a visit, and it doesn't matter if is it Czech or Germany or or Iraq or or uh, Congo. You need to respect the people. You need to respect the culture and their traditions. And if you are doing it and they, they see you are doing it, and it's not fake, they, they, uh, they admire you for that. Uh, but still, you can get into the problems. But again, I do believe it's the same like with the trees in the Amazon. If you do shit, you get back shit. Okay, yeah, I understand. But... Because I never talked to someone who already talked to Taliban on a coffee or something. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, drug lords, I have great stories uh, with <laughs> drug lords as well. <laughs> okay, that's not doing like business <laughs> with them. <laughs> but like a, a small chat. Um, how came it to this situation? Yeah, because they are interested in you. 
But that, like, do you you walk around and then they come? No, they go. They come to you. You need to understand that you are the biggest attraction there. Yeah. Yeah. You are a uh, uh, you are as well guy, white guy with strange thing in in your in your hand, which is not a weapon. Yeah. And nobody understand why you are going uh, to the river and doing something. You know, sometimes they don't even understand that you are you are fishing and what you are doing, and sometimes they might be scared. Sometimes they might be curious, but many times happened to me that guys told me, ah, we heard that a someone from Europe is fishing here. So we wanted to have talk with him. And I asked them, where do you live? And they told me we live 200 kilometers from here. And they came only to have a chat with me, you know? About fishing? No, about life. About life, because they are not meeting guys like uh, f- from Europe normally, you know? So they they are interested. What do we think about them? What 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 medias are telling about them? And then then you are getting into very interesting talks. You know, they are they are telling you their point of view. What what is the truth from their side? You know why they are doing even some. You need to be careful. Into you are getting into the politician kind of uh, discussions. You know, yeah. so you really need to be as well. Because if you I don't want about, to offend them, yeah. Know? Because if I think about topics, uh, by countries like this, I would never try to talk about the politics. Yeah, stuff. but they start. Yeah, but this is like they start. You know what? What you tell and me? You never know. You never know if they are t- testing you only. You know. Yeah. If they are testing you, or if they are really interested. What? What? What do you think? But you know? are you hundred percent true in this moment? Yes. Loyal to them, like talking. Yeah, I have stuff. I'm always happened. Yeah, I'm. Europe. I'm always saying what I read really do believe because I think that's the only option because they see it in the end they see it and you're not scared about it like talking it, to them that it, maybe people it, over here thinking bad over there if you are scared you can't go there really or you without knowledge if you go these places without knowledge you're stupid you know you need to you need to understand as well their traditions a bit you need to you need to as well be able to understand their culture you know You don't want to be disrespectful, you know, uh, doing some Fawkes bus. But of course you are doing them on on the way. But if they see uh, that you didn't do, do it for a purpose or it was a mistake, sometimes they, they laugh about it. But the most important is the, the respect of people. Then you can survive kind of everything. Even I got into really bad situations, really like... With the same people. Yeah, with people in many different groups around the world where where I believe then your life was or our life was really on the edge. But we always got through with with honesty and sometimes laugh and joking. And then in the end, they were waving us. And Was there something like this, like like a situation like this in one of these countries on your bubble fishing stuff? Or was it most really quite easy <laughs> you have to know that these people are really smart yeah. and in in general i don't believe they want to attack you yeah you know over there of course in other places we have been in many situations when when uh people behave more like animals than than humans you know they don't think they do first you know so yes for example papua new guinea we got in uh, several really bad situations which were like life threatening Like the, <laughs> I, I lost the words to be honest because it's really interesting. If you go fishing in Syria, for example, mm-hmm. how does it go? You are told me about Congo. You have to go there, paying you money, their money, tax you, tax there, fifty thousand, twenty thousand, seven thousand, blah blah blah. How does it work in Syria, for example? How was it? Is Where, it easier or is it? No, no, it's always difficult, especially if you go there for the first time, because you you go there, you don't know you don't know anyone there, you don't have good contacts there. So first of all, you need to find someone who you can trust. That's the difficult part, you know. And most of the time, it's not even fishermen. So you are t- starting talking with a driver on on the street, for example, if he knows someone who is fisherman, and then you go v- visit him, uh, and he know, then you find out that the, he's fisherman who is fishing only with electricity, mm. or who is fishing with harpoon, or who is fishing with net, and you start collecting the information. It's like puzzle, you know, mm. like small parts, like like a DNA code which you are putting together, and you are putting the DNA code of the whole 
spectrum of or, or, around the fish. And it takes most of the time several trips to put the picture completely clear and suddenly it makes click and you are there. You are with the right people on the right spot in the right time. Uh, the timing is everything. With these big freshwater fish, the timing is really everything. Because sometimes you have sometimes very short open window to catch the big ones. Mm. Not the numbers. The numbers you can catch through the year. But if you want to catch really the fish from the species, you need to go sometimes two weeks, three weeks in the whole year. And that's everything. What do you have? And if you don't know when you have these two, three weeks, you have no chance. And you have to learn expedition by expedition by expedition, getting more and more information. And you end up in huge country. You don't know and nothing, basically. And you are, you are learning. And that's, that's a part of the, the expedition. And that's as well the part of the kind of life what I, what I love. Because you can't, you can't uh, get these informations most of the time for free. You know, you, you need to fight for it. You, as I said before, it was way more difficult. Because now you have a lot of information about many species. But there are still a lot of species which are super difficult. And these easy travelers don't go there because they wait for people like me and few others, which will open the doors. Mm -hmm. And then in the next 10, 15 years, they will go there. But uh, that's that wouldn't be my style, honestly. Do you finish the barbell puzzle yet? Nearly. Nearly? Nearly. Getting there. I'm super close to 100 kilos now. That's quite I for a barbell. <laughs> I, I didn't get over, but I'm super close. And I uh, missed a few really big ones. I mean... If you hook a, a fish on a spinning tackle, hard, big times, catfish spinning tackle, with 50 kilo braided line on, on, on a lure, and you have 300 meters on the spool, and the fight looks like... <laughs> and then, boom. But the boom is the end of the line of 300 meters of your reel, then you know it's a big one. How many times this happened? Several times. <laughs> several times with unstoppable fish like hooking into the drain. Okay. Like when you don't know how how the fish was big, but believe me, it's big. Huge. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Crazy, crazy. And okay, so we have a 200 kilo barbell. Is there something else? Yeah, there is so much more. But about these species we know about. Like uh, fish, which uh, we have uh, uh, like here, and you can yeah. find them as uh, yeah. You you don't need to talk only about uh, the, the the gigantic fish, but look, even the pike. You know, you you mentioned uh, pike and you mentioned uh, musky, but look, we have as well amur pike, absolutely beautiful fish. I've been in Mongolia uh, this year. You have seen some of the pictures super rare pike these days you know they are disappearing big time from uh, even mongolia because the the places are more and more under pressure not fishermen but uh, uh let's say uh, people you know people pressure and uh different type of chemicals and uh, we are changing the, the water quality everywhere around the world but uh yeah there are so many incredible species around the world uh the life is too short It's same with women, you know. You have so many beautiful women around the world and you have never time to make it all. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good <laughs> I understand. I, yeah, understand. I, look, I don't understand anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, th th that's it. Okay, but maybe what's about catfish? Because if here in Europe we think about catfish, it's Ebro in Spain, it's Po in, in Italy, it's maybe, you know, all these rivers we was talking about. But of course, there is catfish out of Europe, or not? Yes, you have more than 3,000 catfish species. You know, like not like it's the biggest fish family, actually. Really, silur. See, yeah, we uh, yes. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And but like the the, the 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 catfish we know here over in Europe, silurus glanis. Yes, is these existing in other countries where we maybe not think about it? Yes, which many. One? I'm not sure if I want to say that, but yeah, you have them everywhere. You know, uh, the, actually the countries which you have mentioned. We, we don't have to call the name of the country, but yeah. we can, you know, draw a picture. Yeah, crazy. 
you would you would never believe that you, and uh, i i would be i would say 99% cat fishermen have no clue that the the catfish are living there in this specific country yes crazy really crazy countries and it's getting it, it, what, what it's is the difference and there? it's completely unknown and sometimes it's only one lake in the country where uh, a lake yeah one lake in the country where uh for example russian soldiers put catfish 50 years ago and it's completely undiscovered until now and they are there and monster size these like monster size is a good word with catfish because i'm not sure what's the the biggest catfish ever caught in europe officially it's do you know this uh i think uh last year or is it two years i caught 2.8 2.8 meters. This is quite 200 big. meter, and I know about two similar uh, size catfish. So I would say 280. Proved, proved. Like no, no rumors, no, no talking, but measured and proved and pictured fish. Okay, elven fish. In these country you was talking about, like these countries where nobody is knowing about, is it is the catfish bigger there? You think? Yes, I do. I do believe that because what you need to know about France, Italy, Spain, uh, catfish is not a domestic fish. You know, they are. Uh, there was always some population, uh, especially in in, in in Italy and France, very very small, but uh, never in Spain. And uh, uh, normally, uh, when we talk about uh, the origin of catfish, it's uh, Danube Basin, you know, that river Danube. And, At Danube, yeah. Yeah. And uh, in 70s, we brought catfish to, to Spain, to Italy and France, like massively. But something has as well, something has happened in, 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 in these years because, for example, Already before 70s, I know about river in France, which always had population of catfish, but the maximum there was around two meters, two meter ten, never bigger. You know, mm. they didn't grow bigger. I don't know why, but they didn't. And suddenly after 70s, something happened. Difficult to say what. Uh, there, there could be a lot of th theories, but from 70s, the catfish exploded across the whole Europe. And start growing into incredible sizes, you know. And basically, uh, I say after the dogs, the the catfish are really the, the it's the smartest animal across Europe because in 30 years, they spread all over Europe. There is no animal like this. Yeah. So crazy. And now we have catfish in every single river and nearly lake uh, everywhere. You know, everywhere in every, across the whole Europe, we have them. And they are still getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you would ask me, I do catfishing uh, since I caught my first catfish uh, when I was nine. So it's quite early. Unfortunately, more than 30 years. And since I was like uh, 12, 13, I did catfishing really hardcore. And from 15, 16, traveling a lot. Uh, if you would ask me when I was 20, if there is a three meter fish, I would say, you know, it's maybe in the history but not, not anymore. And now when I've seen my fish 2 meter 80, the, the fish was perfect shape, not super old, you know, no, no, no harms on the body. It was perfect fish. And there was only that from three meter fish in yeah. Europe. It's crazy. So now if you would ask me, I do believe there is a three meter fish in Europe or if, if not, then super close to three meters. It's crazy. We will find it out in the next years i think yeah yeah honestly the, the, you, you said it right i think if we if if we don't catch three meter fish in next 10 years we won't see it in the future because the the the, the population is getting now old enough mm. maybe too old plus there is huge impact of commercial fishermen and kind of mafia between commercial fishermen and government to destroy catfish population across whole Europe. Yeah, I, I, I hear about like the post situation. Yeah, and, and, and as well, and, and as well, France. You know, the the <clears throat> there uh, there is a lot of uh, black money, uh, even from people you wouldn't expect. 
they are really uh, the the plan is to to destroy uh, the population of catfish in these countries but why because there are so many or uh, yeah actually it's a very interesting topic you know uh, uh, we had a lot of uh, fish like salmons for example mm. yeah even in even in France a migratory let's call them migratory fish mm. yeah they were always migrating from the from the ocean to the rivers and they were these commercial fishermen very traditional fishermen which were saying and which are still saying you know it's our heritage to to be catching these fish in the past they were catching these fish with basic nets and very basic wooden bones mm. and that was really heritage and uh, and kind of beautiful but back then the rivers were full of these migratory fish and then of course they were less and less and less and less not only because of impact of commercial fishing but as well we have changed so much we have put so many chemicals into the water we have built the dams we have built uh, so many obstacles on the river and that's why we completely changed the ecosystem not only for the fish which are migrating but we created perfect conditions for catfish <laughs> we created the best what you can imagine because the water temperature went higher we created the, the 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 dams we slowed the water as well in the rivers so b- before uh, the, the dams the water is deeper it's calmer it's warmer and i think that was one of the reasons why catfish exploded so much across europe okay and uh, suddenly uh, you have less migratory and what is super easy what what is the enemy why there's so much less migratory fish of course everyone will say it's because of the catfish because catfish are eating all these salmons but that's bullshit and many people are trying to say that the problem with migratory fish you had before the catfish came of course there will be of course some percentage of catfish which will eat migratory fish but that's not the basic problem the basic problem that we have changed the ecosystem completely you know which went minus for the uh, fish which are coming from the ocean and plus for catfish and that's what we have done and we can't change that and because uh, commercial fishermen they had nothing to catch anymore they need to find a new target new money makes sense and what is the what is the most easiest easiest is find a target which is big and good weight good weight big size and unlimited there's only one fish in europe like this and it's catfish and sure. for them it's easy because they say ah catfish it's the biggest enemy of our rivers everywhere in spain in italy in france now in portugal but we have done this you know we have created these conditions and honestly with with the w- water changing so d- drastically fishermen should be now happy that they have catfish because that's the only fish which can adapt such a bad quality water like uh, we have now and honestly they are trying now to put the catfish into the chain of uh, humans like uh, put them in restaurants uh, try to learn people how to make a good recipe of catfish but the honest truth the catfish meat is probably the most toxic food in whole europe because they live very long time they are feeding on on smaller fish they live on the bottom with all the mud and toxic stuff which we are putting from our houses and from the fields you know so the meat of catfish is super toxic but all the studies which they have done they made only out of juveniles so if you have fish which is 1 2 3 years old the the the, the number of the toxic shit which is inside might be with the limits with the limits <laughs> but not with fish which is 150 centimeters or 2 meters or 2 meter 50 which they put into the chain as well and this fish are super dangerous to eat and they want to put it in the, into the schools you know and everywhere to enjoy now and we will keep the tradition yeah 
But they are not keeping their old boats. Yeah. They are not keeping the rowing system. They have huge boats with strong engines. And but is we are already starting. Yes, they... it's. Believe me, there are rivers in France where they have killed from a stretch more than two thousand catfish, completely silently. And they they are saying it's a research. <laughs> they say it's a research. No bullshit. It is not research. It is research how to make business money. Yeah. and money. Yeah. So basically, uh, that's very, uh, very smart destruction plan of catfish population across the whole Europe. This is Nobody crazy. is talking about it and people are afraid to talk about it because believe me, there's a lot of money inside. And uh, yeah, and uh, the, the Romanians, for example, they they have destroyed whole population of Italy. Hmm. Then then they moved to destroy Spanish waters, and now they are moving as well to to France. And these people are selling to commercial fishermen uh, the catfish under the table. There are many proofs, many pictures. Only people are not talking about it. So this is big shit happened. This is this is a big shit happened. This is crazy. Like, but you love catfish. Uh, right. uh, I love uh, I love I love every animal. I just don't like when people are greedy, you know, and when uh, they are hiding business uh, under the scientific reasons. Yeah, this is said. Th this is really awful. Yeah, yeah. Now, like, because you tell me now you're talking about it, and you tell in the same sense as nobody else, or not so many people are talking about it. And to be honest, I never hear about it. Of course, I know that there are people. Uh, who kill a lot of catfish in uh, in Poe, for example, because yeah. this is quite a famous situation, I think, right now. But all the other stuff I don't never hear about. And I would say that I definitely, yeah, hear stuff if something happened. So this definitely will not know a lot of people. So you, as a catfisherman and as a person who, of course, like have a brand in for catfishing. What do you think about it? What do you want to do? What you sh should do? What what's? I'm not really uh, talking uh, about it because I have brand in catfishing. I'm talking about it. I would have the very same problem if this would be happening with carp, with trout, with pike, with zander, but it's happening. I I can see it all the time when I'm on these trips, you know, and uh, and all this is happening at night, not the, during the weekends, and uh, so many people know it, you know. But they are afraid of uh, talking about it because there is a lot of interest, a lot of money. And uh, the, the people which are talking about it, they have um, a lot of problems. Uh, Are you talking about it in the podcast? Yeah, I'm talking about it <laughs> podcast and I don't give a shit because it's truth, you know. Yeah. And uh, that's uh, people need to talk about these things uh, loudly and, and honestly because... Uh, now, uh, there are many people uh, from these circles, they are trying to present catfish like the biggest evil for uh, for uh, the, the, the ecosystem, but it's not the truth. The truth is catfish is super smart. And of course, they want to, they want to grow, they need to eat as well. But uh, there's the same uh, situation with catfish, for example, in some Czech lakes, yeah? When you stuck, when you put 300 catfish every year into the lake, they will never stay 20 centimeters. They grow. And if you do it for 50 years, then you might say the lake is overstocked by catfish. But is it fault of catfish or fault of humans because they were stupid and they didn't think about uh, what will happen in 20, 30, 40 years? So... So everything in in uh, we we should listen and uh, our the, the people which are really smart in in every in every uh, not only in every business but everything what you what you do everything every every corner of humanity you have people which are good for this people which are good for that and people which are good for that and these people we need to we need to listen you know. With really, and when we talk about science, it, it, it must be proved 
that should uh, be. Yeah, it should and, be. And not that they some someone uh, behind the signs is trying to destroy one of the most incredible of his species in the world. Yeah, but if if this happens in the future, like as it goes right now, like all the way, to, like the next five years, for example, what do you think? What's going to happen? Uh, in five years. Look, with catfish population is absolutely easy. Catfish population always um, uh, it's it, it, same with perch. Yeah. Yeah. With perch, you have boom when you when they are growing crazy, crazy, crazy. They grow big sizes, and suddenly in few years it's over. They die, and they uh, and then you have only very few. Sp- uh specimens which are huge but the most of them are quite small in general fish species you know yeah, yeah. You know. no no with perch for with example perch. okay yeah. Yeah. The, with the catfish it's absolutely same now in many places you have you you are in the moment when uh, when 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 the curve is going like this very 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 fast and you have now places with with many fish like 2 meter 40 2 meter 50 uh, 2 meter 60 but this is not going to be forever in many of these places in next 5 years the the, the many big ones will die yeah and they will eliminate eliminate themselves and uh, then the population will always kind of fixed get fixed it means there will be a lot of small fish and some really gigantic and the, the gigantic catfish are the cannibals which are eating the smaller fish but eat, are eating catfish with 1 meter 40 1 meter yeah. 50 yeah so you will have few of these monsters and then many smaller fish because they eat their own population yes and this is very normal uh, in in places for example like delta of danube uh, Ili. And the places where the, the catfish is domestic and living there for many, 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 many years, and that's normally in the in the wild, and it will happen in our rivers as well. Okay. So, so that's kind of how how nature does it. No. Yes. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I understand. Crazy. So, but then you like well, what? Like maybe you can bring it in a in a in a more more like a picture again in five years you think there are catfish over two meter fifty now we have many catfish over two, over two meter fifty yeah but, but do I, you catch, think I don't it will know change maybe 30 fish over two meter fifty every year now it's we have incredible population of two meter fifty now but you you think it will change in for example five years it will change you think we are on the most on on the peak yeah we like are where we have so many yeah, over 250 yes again. we are head we are not at the peak but we are heading to the peak. Okay. And it, I do believe it will never be the same. I think now the generation, we can be super happy because all catfishmen now are uh, living their dream because it will never, it was never so easy to catch two meter 50 and it will never be so easy to catch two, 250. I have to buy a belly boat. As yeah. soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um. Okay. Crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. Many people might not believe it, but there is no trip when I don't catch two fifty now. And I most of the time I catch multiple t- two two fifties. Of course, it, there is a lot of knowledge behind it, but yeah. Of course, it's the population. You need the population yeah, to you, catch it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you need to know the spots and you need to know how to do it and uh, you need to know a few secrets. But if you would tell me 15 years ago that I will catch 2 meter 50 on every trip, I would call you a liar, honestly. <laughs> or completely crazy, crazy guy. Crazy. But one jump back to the to the, to the to the question about these country with the catfish never you know we don't maybe think about is it the same over there with the catfish population or is it like a euro problem because with we big fish yes you it's know it's a euro problem it it's like with lions yeah it's like it with lions you have when you have a good year with a lot of rain with a lot of zebras with a lot of antelopes they 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 make more babies and more babies survive yeah 
That's the same with apex predators everywhere around the world, as well with fish. When they, when you have a lot of food, as well in the Amazon, for example, you have huge catfish, piraiba. They migrate thousands of kilometers upstream the river, and they are following smaller fish. It's amazing. You are in the Amazon when 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 the migration it's like like a great migration in Africa. That's the same in the Amazon with fish. Actually, not many people know, don't know about. I'm there, the same kilometer of the river, and one day, I hear millions of small fish like this. Next day, there are bigger fish like this. Next day, there are bigger fish like this. Then, bigger catfish, and in the end, in one week, then you have the monsters, 100, 150, 200 kilo big catfish, because they are following each other to prey. And more of these small fish you have, bigger explosion of the apex predators you have. Yeah. So it's it's basic rule of nature. Around the world, it doesn't matter where you are. So it's quite similar with uh, uh, with all fish like this. Like you said, in, now we have in every single lake or river catfish. You know, like in every one. I think there's no lake with all the catfish. Yeah, like you very, have, very few. You have a pike and a catfish, you yeah. know, like... Yeah. Um, because they could adapt it. It's, it, it's the most adaptive f f fish in the world, I think, catfish. They can adapt everywhere. You can find them in, in trout rivers, marble rivers, carp rivers. Uh, you can find them even super close to the ocean. I caught catfish even on the surface 200 meters already in the ocean. Really? Yeah, on the surface when you have full moon and there's a lot of fresh water coming. I caught them on the surface. Really, two hundred meters. So they, then it's like a half-half situation of salt and yeah, sweet water. Yeah, uh, on the on the, it's brackish water. Yeah, yeah, on okay. the top you have yeah. salt as fresh water, and down uh, uh, you you have the salt water. But it's the most adaptive. So you already water. catch a catfish from the beach, uh, <laughs> from the boat in front of the yeah. beach. Yeah, crazy. This is crazy. In Europe, yes, in Europe. Zander as well. Zander, they can take okay, it. But Zander, Zander is something like like pike. We you know in, in Germany we have this northern part of Germany yes. with the ocean where a lot of big pikes living there. Yeah. And also sometimes they come Zander perch. Yeah. The in. biggest predators you have always in Delta. But never, never. I hear never from a catfish. Never. Yeah, yeah. They they do a lot actually, and they can travel a lot with the with the tide. They go with uh, with a when you have a lot of fresh water coming with different face of the moon. They go very very uh, close to the ocean, and when it's changed, the tide change, they travel again upstream. Okay, crazy, crazy. So I understand we have to use the time for catfishing right now. Yes, for now, catching the biggins. Yes, you you exactly hit it. Now next ten years is the time to catch the the world record fish in Europe. This is a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying <it> every year. <laughs> Crazy, um, but because you know, I, I I I always think about the 200 kilo barbel again. To be honest, is there a way that a barbel, for example, if you bring a barbel from Syria, for example, to Europe, you have a smile on your face, but you know what I mean. Uh, what I want. If they will survive. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh, you have to think about it. Yeah, we, we have been thinking <laughs> about, about many crazy things. You know, what do you think how catfish got into Ebro, you know? Yeah. Uh, as well, one guy from Germany. I, I know. I, I don't want to mention his name, but uh, and there were uh, many other people and friends uh, which were traveling with other fish species. Uh, I mean, freshwater European into the other lake. It was normal, you know. Yeah. And it started already in 60s, 70s when people were driving bicycle and they had one pike or one catfish or one carp, bring it to a small pond behind yeah. the village. So that was normal everywhere across Europe. But still, these uh, we have hard winter. That's a problem. We have okay. we have hard winter, and they they wouldn't uh, they most of the species they they wouldn't survive. You have maybe two species which would be able to survive our condition. First is snail perch. What? Uh, Nile, Nile perch. Nile perch. I really? think they would survive in places like Spain or Portugal. Yeah. And probably alligator gar. Alligator gar probably would survive as well in Spain. And These are living in Texas, right? Yes. Yeah. Alligator gar in 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 uh, in Texas, River Trinity and other rivers. And Nile perch is African species. 
But you can have oh, ice, you can have uh, temperatures a lot below zero, you know. Uh, so they are like more yeah, confident they, they with wouldn't probably like They wouldn't probably grow so good and yeah. grow so fast, but uh, I'm quite confident that they would survive. Okay, crazy. Crazy. Okay. Um, okay, this sounds like I have a lot of big fish now in my yeah, imagine bringing null perch to ebro no 100 percent not yeah but you, you would have you would have two fish over 100 kilos in the same european water you think this would be happen yeah is it already happened you think i don't know i don't know but it might be possible <laughs> okay i think this is a good part to end this episode because i think i'm really interested in to, to talk more about like being a giant fish we already here know in Germany or like not Germany, Europe. Um, but maybe we can discuss it in another episode one more time. Maybe there are some more species you you keep in mind because you're always smiling and I think there were some more. <laughs> but um, I think from the length it, it's enough now. We get really detailed into the into the catfish stuff, which was really interesting. Um, last but not least, I want to ask you one last question is The catfish, the two meter eighty, you was caught, right? Do you catch another big in the same day? Yeah, actually, I did. <laughs> really, I I did. Uh, was with my wife Claudia. Back then, she was my wife, but uh, I made good decision. <laughs> I, that's the thing I have to say. But yeah, uh, we caught the same day uh, another huge fish. Caught it from the belly boat, had it then close to close to the shore. And uh, I was looking at the fish, and I was saying, it's really nice fish around. Before or after? After. After, after yeah. this fish. And um, I said, yeah, it's nice fish, like 2 meter 30, 2 meter 40. And Claudia looked at me, and she said, no, it's much bigger. I said, no. <laughs> and then we measured it, and it was 256. <laughs> Normally, like, really gigantic yeah. catfish. But my brain was completely, you know... I would say even so fucked up by that fish, which I never believed that it might exist. You know, a head like that, that uh, for me, it was kind of small <laughs> in that moment, you know? And then I lifted and then I saw the tail, the, the size of the head. I said, okay, yeah, it's two, two, 250 plus. But when you see when you see uh, this huge catfish with 280, it's it's just different level, you know, it's just... I saw the video and it's like, it was like on your, on your it was like yeah, this size, yeah, like, in, in the completely complete. fish for a three guys, honestly, it's just, you can't lift it, you can't do anything. You can make much better picture with two meter fish than that is because <laughs> it's completely out of your level. Crazy. Great. Out of your level. This is a good last sentence, I think. Um, yeah. Nice, really nice information. And um, we will see in the next episode. Shit happens. Shit happens. <laughs> Before every video stops!